Today I'm going to show you how to make any HTML element scalable. Uh, you can use this technique to make uh, an HTML5 animation scalable, uh, any kind of a complex layout where things are positioned based on pixels, or even something like an image map. So that's what I have here. Now if you weren't online 15 or 20 years ago, you may not have seen one of these before. What it contains is an image, and then overlaid over it are different clickable regions defined as polygons, circles, or rectangles. And each of these different shapes will link to a different page. So in this case, we have one image, which will link to the literary club. And then if you hover over any of the individuals, it will link to their profile on Wikipedia. So what does this look like in our HTML? We have a map element with a name a whole bunch of different area elements, and then underneath is just an image. This use map attribute tells the browser that it's going to use this image map. Let's look at these area elements. So the area element has a shape, either poly, rect, or circle, whether it's a polygon, a rectangle, or a circle. So we have the coordinates defined here in x, y coordinate pairs. So all of these are defined in pixels based on the size of our map. All of these are uh, telling the browser where to put the different coordinates to draw these shapes. So this is 133 pixels from the left, 343 pixels from the top. The next one is 124 pixels from the left, 287 from the top and so on. For the rectangle, we have two sets of coordinate pairs. So that is one corner and the other corner, and then it draws the other points. For the circle, we have the coordinate where the center of the circle is, as well as the radius, and then it will draw the circle around that center point. So the problem with this is that it's not scalable. Because everything's defined in pixels, we can't make it fit on a larger or smaller screen. And so use of this has really fallen out of favor with responsive web design and uh, the variety of different screen sizes and devices that people need to use to access the web. But as you can see, there's nothing else in HTML that allows you to define a custom clickable area. I see people ask almost every week how to define a circular link. And there's no good way. Even if you include a circular element in HTML, the corner, everything is a rectangle, so the corner is still clickable. And so people go to a, uh, great lengths to cover up or mask links so that only the area, uh, only a circular clickable area is left to click through on the page or all kinds of other crazy techniques to try to use something other than image map for this kind of functionality. So, but what if we could make this scalable? So I'm gonna show you a technique today called the KL scale that we discovered last week that allows you to make any HTML element scalable. And so that goes a long way to making it responsive. So first I'm gonna add EQCSS, which gives us element queries added onto our CSS. Now I'm gonna use a style tag. We need to wrap this. So I'm gonna create a div to wrap this. So let's write a scope style for our div element. We're gonna begin by saying at element div, now we're gonna write a rule for this div and say its width should be 100% and its height should be 100 element width units divided by the formula for aspect ratio, which is width divided by height. In this case, our original width is 720 and our original height is 523. Now the last thing I'm gonna to add to this wrapper element is I'm gonna set position relative. This will allow us to position the map and the image in the center of it. And then the very last thing that we're gonna do is the magic that makes it scalable. So check this out. We're gonna write a rule for the map and the image that show up inside the scoped div here. For them, we're gonna set position absolute, top 50%, left 50%, and then we're gonna move it back on itself so that this element is positioned in the center uh, no matter how big or small it is. So for that, I'm gonna do transform translate x minus 50%, translate y, 
minus 50%. And the very last thing is scale. And for this, I'm going to evaluate the offset width of our div element divided by our original width. So what this means is that if our containing element here, if this div is going to be 1440 pixels wide, and we did 1440 divided by 720, the number here is going to be two. And so with scale two, our 720 pixel wide image and map are going to show up as though they're 1440 pixels wide. And the same if we go the other way, if our containing element is half the size of our original resolution, that formula is gonna give us scale 0.5. And so our 720 pixel wide map and image are gonna be scaled down to half the size. So let's check out how this works. So now we have the image and the map and if I click on them, it takes me to their page. Do you remember our circular area element right here? And our rectangle. So as you can see, using this scaling technique, we're able to scale things uh, defined in pixels that up until now, there's been no way in CSS to resize or scale these. Now, I'm not sure that this is going to lead to a revival of image maps, but it is interesting to know a technique that would allow you to take something like an image map and scale it up or down if you needed to in your layout. So hopefully this removes a lot of barriers for responsive design and allows people to take existing content or existing elements or existing layouts defined uh, using pixels or with absolute positioning and find a way to easily uh, resize these. So I'm going to use this same technique for HTML5 animations so I can create a complex, beautiful layout just at one size, and then the entire animation can scale up or down depending on the space that's available, uh, depending on you know where in the layout or in, on which website we decide to embed it. So this is a, a very handy technique to know. Um, as far as I know, I've never seen it before. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that this is something that's kind of new in 2017, and I can't wait to see how it gets used. So that's all. Hope you have fun with the Kale Scale.